fine that's good so what we will do today again that uh, uh, we will be uh, recapitulating what we discussed yesterday and then we'll be moving forwards and we'll be talking about uh, uh, one or two very very common problems uh, which uh, the mother faced as far as the breastfeeding is concerned and uh, then probably we'll discuss something about more about bfhi that is baby friendly hospital initiative and uh, we discussed about the baby friendly community initiative we'll touch a bit of that also and then we'll go to the complementary feeding and then if possible we'll try to finish it if not possible then we we'll, we might have to continue uh, again all right so that is the kind of uh, phenomena which we are going to have so let us start our journey once again and uh, again as i uh, told you that uh, uh, there were number of faqs uh, started with that i don't know how to feed and no milk production milk is not enough sufficient and uh, asking milk every half an hour to one hour frequent motions no motions for three to five days why should i breastfeed and then for how long should i breastfeed so these were the questions and we we try to give you the answers of that so we talked about the institutional deliveries and the details of breastfeeding and the timing of the breastfeeding and how much increase has been placed in nfhs 3 and 4 and we talked about the exclusive breastfeeding we talked about four months and six months and try to explain you with the help of a growth chart and uh, with the help of the requirement of the infant, if the infant needs more, then it has to be weight related. And the knowledge between the worker and the doctor has to be different. The doctor has to have much more knowledge than, uh, than the worker. So, and WHO will give one recommendation for everybody. And then we talked about the maximum amount of uh, milk which is secreted. Some people say it can go up to 100 ml per, uh, per day, but it can't go more than that. Then we talked about uh, colostrum its role benefit of colostrum then we talked about why colostrum is important why the child can't take more and healthy newborn child and we showed the comparison with the help of three times of balls then we talked about that it should be started as early as possible then we discussed the mechanism that how this pro uh, prolactin and oxytocin is secreted and what is the role of prolactin what is the role of oxytocin and then we talked about the taking care of the lactating woman she should be free of anxiety and she should get adequate amount of nutrition extra nutrition which we have been talking about right from uh, the time of normal requirement to uh, prevention of childhood malnutrition to breastfeeding that is how we are uh, uh, continuing and then we talked about what are the prerequisites um, infant should be hungry dry and should be at comfortable temperature and the mother should be uh, it's, it's, uh, sitting in or semi sitting position and i told you that mother should never lie down while feeding the child because this can lead to uh, tonic membrane uh, perforation and the child may suffer from otitis media then we talked about how to help mother to attach the infant then we talked about positioning of the infant then what are the signs of proper attachment then one breast or both breast so we discuss in greater detail that why what is the concept of four milk and what is the concept of hind milk and then we talked about uh, that uh, uh, the the best stimulus the take home message was that the best stimulus to the breast is empty breast and that is why the alternate breast is to be offered to the infant and minimum time to suckle is for 10 minutes then we talked about the 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 common problems that uh, the infant is a very very rapid sucker in two three minutes he takes up the 50 percent of the milk so the mother has to wake up the child forcefully and uh, um, and and the infant must uh, suckle at the breast at least for 10 minutes and uh, only this uh, way you can even reduce the problem of gastrocolic reflex because if he's taken an adequate amount of feed then uh, he, he will be uh, satisfied after feed and he might sleep for three to four hours after feeds and if he's sleeping and if he's doing that then the the frequency of the breast milk will be reduced the gastrocolic reflex will be taken care of the number of motions will be reduced and the mother can be satisfied when when if you if you sensitize the mother that the child is passing adequate urine and if the facility for the the for the weighing is there then you can always take the weight of the child and we have already discussed about the growth that yes uh, 
uh, the infant gains around 900 grams in a month and if that is happening uh, nothing to, to do much but if that is not happening then again you'll have to look into the uh, nutrition of the mother then now let us talk about what are the advantages of feeding the breast milk is always available no preparation time it is at a proper temperature it is clean and fresh and it is free of contaminating agents and it is cheap or you can say it is free it is free cheap though we will not say because a mother has to take some amount of extra nutrition so we will we'll call it that yes compare it compare in comparison to the top feeding it is very very cheap then uh, to the infant what are the advantages it means it meets the full nutritional requirement of the infant up to the four to six months of age and moreover that is more important there are less incidence of allergy bronchial asthma and intolerance and because milk contains antimicrobial factors which fight uh, colostrum contains that those antibodies so it it it, it uh, fight against various diseases then uh, sucking suckling helps in the development of jaw and teeth and also now there are studies that the infant who are given exclusive breastfeeding then they are protected from getting obese that is again important point which you'll have to remember because uh, we are living in a country where there is a double burden on one hand there are undernourished children and on the other hand the uh, number of overweight children is increasing especially this is happening in the areas and number of studies have been done in the various public schools or private schools where we are finding a lot of uh, children uh, going towards overweight and obesity so that is an important point which is to be kept in mind as far as the advantage of the breastfeeding to the mother is concerned it helps the building of bond with her child then it also helps in the uh, establishment of lactation if the child is with the mother what, what we call it a rooming in practice. rooming in practices you keep the mother and the child together and if you are uh, the other advantage is that even just after delivery if you are putting the uh, putting the child on the breast of the mother then uh, one way or the other you are also teaching uh, them the kangaroo mother kangaroo mother care which is very very important as far as india is concerned because in winters that could be one important factor for prevention of hypothermia so it helps in the spacing of children also also by prolonging the period of infertility or what we call as that is known as lactational amenorrhea so these are the advantages to the mother now we have to come to what are the contraindication to breastfeeding now number one contraindication or inability is markedly inverted or cracked nipples now you will have to keep in this this thing in mind that whenever a woman goes for the antenatal checkup then the breast examination is a must because at that particular point of time if you find and this is a very very quite a common problem that uh, inverted nipple or cracked nipples are seen of course nipple is more more a problem in the lactation period not in pregnancy but the inverted nipples yes that is a that is a problem and if, if it is diagnosed early it can be corrected even in the pregnancy itself even in the pregnancy itself and the majority of time uh, we have to correct it after the birth of the child because it's missed so you can write it down make it a rule uh, thumb rule that whenever in the antenatal period of course no book it that you have to do the breast examination because it is important if you want to you have to understand if you want to establish uh, the breast feeding properly then you you should you should know whether their mother is having normal nipple structure or they are inverted and if they are inverted then uh, you have to do something so that it can be corrected then uh, the the uh, there are various other contraindications and these are related to what we discussed yesterday also uh, then infections could be if there is a mastitis, mastitis or by staphylococcus aureus or when the breast abscess is present and uh, if there is a active tuberculosis then uh, active tuberculosis is there so what we are supposed to do is yes we have to treat the mother and if the mother is on treatment then yes and continue then hiv and uh, uh, the other thing, things uh, which discussed yesterday also that initial it was 
uh, said that yes in, in developed countries it is contraindicated and then the informed consent and in developing countries yes you can continue when the concept of the informed uh, consent came in and the 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 the, the guideline changed and then uh, yes if, if there is an infection of this simplex virus when best cycles are present then that is also that could also be a contraindication but there are a number of drugs which are contraindicated during breastfeeding and there is a big list and i will uh, just enumerate that list that is amphetamine antineoplastic agents bromocriptine chloramphenicol cementidine cocaine cyclosporine cyclosporine diethyl stilbestrol doxorubicin ergots gold salt heroin immunosuppressants iodides lithium methimazole methyl amphetamine nicotine radio pharmaceuticals and tetracycline so these are all which are drugs uh, uh, which are contraindicated is feeding the child so these, these drugs should not be used and if these drugs are being used then maybe you have to uh, uh, stop the breastfeeding and have to go to alternative mode then uh, again yes mother with any active infection with, with the infant having no infection the hiv positive mothers we already discussed mothers with septicemia active tuberculosis type fever breast or, or malaria it is indicated. then uh, another important is, is substance abuse mother that is again very very important and the next important contraindication is seizures or psychosis in the mother because then she can harm the young child so these are few contraindications to exclusive or to breastfeeding and you have to remove the cause and then you can continue with the breastfeeding then the concept of baby friendly hospital initiative and this bfhi was created and promoted by who and unicef and uh, probably it was uh, started 3 decades back because i remember uh, we we organize a workshop in our own medical college involving the private practitioners so that was long time back maybe somewhere in uh, uh, early 90s or something like that uh and uh, at that particular point of time the number of the institutional deliveries were very very less but now once the institutional deliveries have increased to 70% and still uh, we are not able to reach to that 70 or 79% or 80% level of exclusive breastfeeding then this initiative becomes more important because every health facility must be made baby friendly what is the concept of baby friendly the concept is this that if you are not following the the the, the commandments which are there the the 10 steps which are there uh, in, in any health facility uh, if, uh, where the deliveries are taking place initially yes there was a requirement that minimum you should have 250 deliveries uh, uh, per month only then that hospital will be made but now it is applicable to to every it should be applicable to every facility so if uh, they are not promoting the exclusive breastfeeding then they are not baby friendly meaning by they are baby enemy that is why it was the name was kept as baby friendly hospital uh, initiative and uh, there are 10 steps for the hospital to fulfill and correct breastfeeding practices alone can prevent 1 million deaths worldwide that was the estimation at that particular point of time and this initiative has been revised in 2018 once again so i will not be showing you the previous one i will be showing you the the new uh, steps which they have recommended uh, what are the these the, these 10 steps are number one is it comply fully with the international code of marketing of breast milk substitute and relevant world health assembly resolutions meaning by that they should not promote any breast milk substitute meaning by no formula no powder no powder milk preparation must be prescribed by the healthcare facility then number 2 they must have a written infant feeding policy that is routinely communicated to staff and parents if they have a policy and the policy says that yes you have to give only exclusive breast feeding to the child 
and nothing is permitted and this is known to every staff as well as to the prospective parents or the current parents then it will go a long way in implementing exclusive breastfeeding then uh, it must have a uh, 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 it must have a on monitoring and data management system me by how many deliveries are conducted and out of them how many are getting the exclusive breastfeeding if there are contraindication or low birth weight or a premature child is there then what is to be done and nowadays milk bank concept is there so people are even uh, 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 you can say people are uh, taking out milk and transporting milk from one city to another the milk bank concept has come up in our country so we will be talking about how what is this milk bank and how this milk can be stored and how it can be used so that is the number one step and i hope all you'll agree that if it is implemented in right spirit then it is going to make a difference and tech because otherwise what is happening uh, we have a shortage of so much of healthcare force that nobody is bothered everybody is bothered about the job which is there and the doctors and the workers they are overburdened so it is important to have the first step is to sensitize each healthcare facility regarding the baby friendly hospital initiative and it should follow the code and it have a policy written policy which should be there and which should be uh, publicized also then uh, the number two point is ensure that staff have sufficient knowledge competence and skill to support breastfeeding simply having a policy and then if they do not know the solutions is not going to help so that is why i said breastfeeding is such a important topic and uh, for your knowledge uh, for for sharing part of you people have written books on breastfeeding people have written books on breastfeeding there are books on breastfeeding and uh, what sort of material we able to uh, collect and uh, uh, teach you here is taken from the different books so that uh, you should have the sufficient knowledge of the problems that is why we started with the faqs frequently asked questions and i hope Uh, those questions uh, the answer of those questions you might have got by now so number 2 is the competence and skills it is also important the staff must know what is the right kind of attachment what is the right positioning and how to attach the baby to mother's breast uh, again that the, the these are the 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 skills which are required uh, which every everyone must have and it is only possible if you are working in a facility either in a community or in a, in a in a facility with the mothers and you are observing and watching and correcting and uh, the, the the concept of supportive supervision is there so if you are providing supportive supervision also so that is important point number 2 then the point number 3 is discuss the importance and management of breastfeeding with pregnant women and their families again uh, you have to tell and i have told you number of times the same example when we ask the mother in which school you are going to put your child so 100% of the time the answer will be whatever is the best school they can afford they will put the child there and we then we always say yes yes you should always ask them then you should do the best which is which is important for your child right now it is nature's gift so you must continue with the breastfeeding and you have to tell them about the growth of the child if you are able to tell them the growth of the child three four important points like if the child is going to gain 7 to 8 kg in the first year of life and in first four months of life he is going to gain say 3.6 kg he is not going to gain after four months this much in the, another 3.6 kg he will gain in next eight months of life that is point number 1 Num- number 2 you can give the example that your is born with a head circumference of 34 cm and by one year it will be 47 cm so you have to take care of your growth of your child it is the responsibility of the mother if the mother and the father both are sensitized or the head of the family sensitized or the sister in law is sensitized or the mother in law sensitized then the job is done then the job is done because if they know the importance then they will 100% implement the best practices and best feeding is the number one best practice so that is why we thought that we should continue vision series on this 
and we will be taking up one by one all the best practices. So, what is the number four point? The facilitate immediate and uninterrupted skin to skin contact and support mothers to initiate breastfeeding as soon as possible after birth. I again re emphasized uh, today in the beginning that you should put the baby immediately on the on the on, on the mother breast and there will be a skin to skin contact again which will which will which will improve the lactation plus it will also help in teaching the mother the kangaroo mother care which is of utmost in the winter period that is of utmost importance where we don't have the facilities of warmers and other things and in winter hypothermia is the major killer in the neonatal period and kangaroo mother care can be utilized so this is again important not from the best point of uh, breastfeeding point of view but also important from the point of view of prevention of hypothermia then uh, number fifth point is support mothers to initiate and maintain breastfeeding and manage common difficulties again uh, that is why we said you have to do it and we'll be talking about two three difficulties which are common uh, which mother face maybe after after the, and once we are able to finish the steps of BFHI. So you have to provide support to the mother. If the mother-in-law does not know or she does not birth, she might have given birth to his child maybe 25 years back or so. So she has forgotten or maybe she was not taught. She was practicing herself, right? So that is why we say it is art and science and you have to provide support and if you can maintain the support groups, if you can uh, produce a link woman in the community, which we, we, we uh, which I am very fond of, we have worked a lot with the concept of baby friendly community initiative. Yes, you have to make the, the these kind of support groups so that what difficulties they are there, how they can, they can uh, get the support and in the digital platform nowadays, uh, every one of you can uh, provide support to to the beneficiaries if they are there and if you are willing to yes and uh, i will go even uh, even to that stage where i will say there is no national program for the promotion of feeding in india of course there is a breast breastfeeding promotion net for india bpni uh, which works but we need to have, have a focus we need to have a national program on on uh, breastfeeding promotion Promotion only, breastfeeding promotion only. There have to be a national program. Only then the IC activities will increase and only that will be sensitized, right? So, and the support groups will be there. Then the number six point is do not provide breastfed newborn any food or fluid other than breast milk unless medically indicated. That is what is the concept of exclusive breastfeeding. Then number seven is enable mothers and their infant to remain together to practice rooming in, in 24 hours a day. Until and unless there are some contraindication, if there is a low birth weight child or some respiratory difficulty is there and you want to keep the child in, in neonatal care unit, then things are different. But otherwise, they should be uh, kept together. That is point number seven. Then the point number eight, it is support mothers to recognize and respond to their infant cues for feeding. Child cries differently in different situations and that you will have to learn when you will be dealing with the newborn kids. Their cry becomes difficult and the mothers are very much smart and adoptive to this and they know whether the child is crying because if he is hungry or whether there is other problem is there. We, we will take a, a small lecture on colic also. I, I, I promise my postgraduates the colic is an acronym the majority of time all of you must be knowing that the infants they cry too much so we will take a informal uh, small lecture on colic you can keep it you can note it down and you can remind me and colic is again an acronym and the full follic is uh, cause obscure lengthy infant crying again we will talk about it maybe later on at some other point of time so uh, you have to again sensitize the mother that they should respond to infants demand or cry they are different at different point of time then counsel mothers on the use and risk of feeding bottles teats and pacifiers i think uh, this should not be counseling it should be 
preventive this is a preventive aspect they 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 um, they should be asked not to use not to use feeding bottles teats and pacifiers because they create and they they, they are the biggest uh, uh, armamentarium which creates the concept of nipple confusion so it should not be used at all and um, um, the mothers they usually they they don't want they they are overworked or they 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 don't want to take care of the child so th- that sensitivity has to be developed in the mother that this child is precious and you have to take care of this child for one year if you are able to take care of the child for first year of life then probably nothing else will be required this is my personal experience those parents who have been coming to us over a period of 30 years now they uh, those kids those young kids have got but their own kids now and uh, they, we just do the same phenomena we just take care of one year and after that nothing is required and if you are and the, the other advantage is that if you are implementing the best practices with, with gpst parents they agree then in my experience i even don't remember the name of the child for first six months because i don't write any prescription number two that means you avoid lot of drugs in the initial period of life number two what happens is yes uh, these kids if they are taken care of and if they are going normally then the risk of hospitalization and risk of serious infection is minimized so, so there is no need and on year hardly anybody needs any special care because by the time the parents are so much sensitized regarding the child health care they don't need anything they only cover routine immunization and other uh, common routine problems that's all so that is the importance right you will have to remember then coordinate discharge so that the parents and the infants have timely access to ongoing support and care so uh, it is also the responsibility of the healthcare facility to provide long term support and care and i don't know how many states this is going on the home bo- home based new one care now is going on in uttar pradesh yes it is going on and uh, uh, in our llr medical college merit we were working with the government of up and unicef on this particular project where the six visits are provided to every child by the asha worker so uh, you have to read in greater detail about that 03740 28 and 42 days that is the the the, the uh, visit due. and every child is to be visited by the asha and there are checklist there she has to do the checklist and she has to uh, sensitize the mother regarding breastfeeding and other things right so that is beyond the scope of this so that is again important aspect and home based new one care has helped so many children to those who are critically sick to reach to facilities and uh, those who are normal to attain normal normal growth and development of course it is up to the new one period it has to be extended so hbnc plus is going to come up and it will be implemented maybe after the, this covid phenomena is over then hbnc plus will be taking the child up to the one year of age that may happen in my lifetime or at least it will be happening in your lifetime so these are the concepts of baby friendly hospital initiative now let us come down to the solutions what are the solution inverted or flat nipples use use of breast shells in the brazeri or massaging exercise hoffman technique with the thumb and uh, the index finger uh, this exercise is to be carried out then you one can use breast pump or nip, nipple shields maybe the one but the most practical solution to inverted or flat nipple is this one and this nipple you just have to take a 2 ml syringe and uh, you have to cut the syringe from the nozzle size if you cut it from here and then you insert the piston of the needle from this side nozzle side right so what you now get that this is the uh, this is the whole area now this you uh, whole area you put it on the breast and then you suck the piston 
you suck the piston outside so there is a development of negative pressure so nipple will be stretched inside the syringe this is very common we have used it but remember you have to use it 2 ml syringe because if the nipple size is smaller and you take a bigger syringe then this is not going to work because the vacuum will not be created so the vacuum will be created only if the size of the uh, of the of this what is this called as i know uh, the exact name of this area what we call it uh, so this holding area we call it we hold, by which you are going to hold the uh, nipple of the breast and you are going to produce a negative pressure so gently mother can pull it and she if she keep on doing this exercise then the inverted or the flat nipple is converted into normal nipple but then again it is important and i again hi highlight that this should have been done or this must have been done or must be done or should be done in the antenatal period when when uh, you are examining the mother in the antenatal period then you must examine the nipples also then and if you found found them inverted or flat then this this simple exercise will help a lot to the mothers because if the nipple is not available how the child is going to suckle that is important right so this is one solution this is very very innovative and easy to use then uh, the, the other problem is sore nipple yes uh, sore nipple means uh, you have to do the proper positioning of the infant while Uh, breastfeeding and you have to offer baby short and frequent feeds for less vigorous sucks because some babies they suck very very vigorous and then they cause injury they can cause injury and the other uh, solution is that feed on the other side if possible the the last and the important thing is you have to pull the baby's chin or the corner of the mouth break suction before removing him from the breast so you just have to uh, pull the baby chin uh, from the breast a bit and then uh, you can remove him so that uh, it is done easily then uh, the mother can keep the nipple moist maybe with lanolin etc as the moist healing is better for them or the nipple shield as shown in this picture graph in this pic uh, nipple shield can be used uh, if there is a four nipple then uh, there is another other problem of leaking breast uh, this is a phenomena which happens with lot of mothers this is very very common um, the mother starts uh, feeding from the one breast uh, then uh, the milk from the other breast also start pouring in so the mother's leaking with one breast while feeding on the other should use towel or cotton diaper to catch the flow or disposable or washable cotton pads may be used in the bassery to avoid once with plastic lining and uh, not to miss the feed or going longer between the feeds may be may be able to solve the problem or if the mother put slight pressure against the breast from which she is not feeding then it may uh, stop sudden leaking or a let down reflex these are the few things by which uh, the solutions can be uh, made then the other other problem is of twin Yes, twins. I I showed you number of examples of twins and how to go for twin feeding. Twin feeding is very very important. Majority of time, yes, people think that it is possible, but yes, it is possible. The mother has to think positive. She should be free from any anxiety and negative thoughts because you must understand if the mother is anxious or there are negative thoughts, then the lactation is bound to. fail so that the baby may be fed at the same time position like x in front of the mother or held on sides right these are the pics which are showing you how to do the twin feeding but then yes uh, uh, adequate diet and rest and exercise for the mother is important and uh, if uh, the kids are not satisfied if the supplementary uh, uh, things are required or the milk is required then yes you can feed with the cup dropper syringe or paldai avoid bottle at every cost that you'll have to remember there is no scope for bottle 
in the child rearing practices and uh, we always say uh, how you can uh, avoid it you don't have to keep the bottle you have to uh, throw away the bottle if the bottle is inside the house then the mother will definitely use that bottle so bottle should not be brought inside the house whether it is a big bottle or a, a, or, a or a large bottle i hope you can understand the meaning of when i'm saying the big bottle what is the meaning of big bottle or large bottle if 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 it is not there inside the house then the chances of consumptions are are less but if it is inside the house then the mother is going to use it so that is to be avoided at all cost then uh, the problem comes that if somebody has adopted a child now this has become very very common and uh, uh, again it works in a nature calls that if you adopt the child right from the um, from the newborn age now surrogate mother concept is also there and a lot of famous actors have done that uh, and uh, they are keeping the child with them and uh, if they want to give breastfeeding then uh, yes it may be a nature call then uh, uh, most mother may use enough milk for an adopted child whether they have been pregnant or not because uh, the reflexes will again uh, produce the prolactin and oxytocin and that will do the job but uh, yes uh, if there is a lactation uh, failure also then we will talk about it the key to lactation is breast stimulation by the breast pump before the arrival of the baby or continued suckling by the child or use of a pump when the baby is suckling in the breast then uh, Uh, before we go to the storing of the breast milk i said uh, i would like to share with you which is not there in this presentation but the thought is coming to my mind and it i must share with you usually what happens when the mother is not sensitized and uh, somehow the other the other is uh, is is advised the the top feeding and then uh, gradually there is a nipple confusion and and the child does not suckle then we consider now now, now the game is over you have to continue with the top it but then relactation can be tried in these kind of mothers and uh, sinni is the organization uh, which has done a lot of work on this and how to do real how to carry out this relactation exercise you need to have the assistance of somebody in the in the family you put the baby on the breast of the mother and you take the uh, either the pumped out milk breast milk or other top feed whatever is the phenomena and uh, you take it in a dropper and a person stands behind the mother and uh, uh, by drop by drop put the milk over the breast and gradually uh, with the gravity it will go towards nipple and child will start suckling on the breast this will again enhance the 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 the, the Uh, the reaction of the hormones the hormonal reaction and uh, this way yes we have been able to do it in number of other this this particular phenomena and even if a gap of 15 days or 20 days uh, initial period uh, the relactation is uh, you can uh, establish the relactation you need to have patience for that and uh, uh, gradually and gradually the amount will increase once it starts coming then yes if you do take care of the nutrition of the mother the gradually the amount will start increasing and uh, then uh, later on maybe after 15 days or or 3 weeks time they'll need to uh, pour the milk with the help of dropper from the top so, so this is another uh, successful story on relactation which was tried by the sini and we have followed it up in number of mothers so this again can be used now uh, there could be special circumstances where you have to store the breast milk now how do we store the breast milk where we, uh, we have to store the breast milk again that is all uh, again important and nowadays in metropolitan cities yes the uh, breast milk bank concept is catching up fast and people are uh, storing the breast milk for their babies like the concept of stem cell preservation is going on 
similarly the breast milk and now people are becoming more conscious more cautious and conscious of course in rural area it may not be possible or uh, may not be possible again in the slums but then then if you are dealing with a with a population belonging to higher strata or the middle strata of the society then this is the reality nowadays the breast milk may be stored in hard plastic or glass containers with tight lid or specially designed bags and about 2 to 4 ounces is stored at a time to minimize wastage 2 to 4 ounces one ounce is equal to 30 ml so 60 to 120 ml because majority of the kids will not be able to take more than this amount of milk at one point of time then uh, what is the storage time uh, yes this is again important uh, you can uh, store the milk at room temperature up to 10 hours in a refrigerator from 2 to 8 degree centigrade up to 8 days in a freezer from 2 weeks to 3 months and in deep freezer up to 6 months and milk must never be heated for reuse the container should be held under running water so that temperatures comes down and then it can be uh, uh, it can be used it can be used now this is under guideline uh, temperature up to 6 hours and in refrigerator up to 24 hours and in freezer up to 3 to 6 months this is a national guideline on uh, lactation management centers so this is the the guideline as far as the storage of the breast milk is concerned so what we have done today is now now we have come to the end of the exclusive breastfeeding and 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 the common problems which are there as far as the breastfeeding is 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 concerned so uh what has happened i don't find anybody is anyone there okay because i am not finding anyone so I, i i got confused whether anyone is here or not uh i don't know so let me go to this spotlight once again here uh, shall we continue shall we continue shall we continue or 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 or, or we stop here and uh, we take the complimentary feeding maybe tomorrow uh, what is your opinion yes anybody can write it here to me whether we should continue or 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 we should stop here what is the opinion let me drink some water yes if you are here then what is the opinion okay so let us continue maybe another 15 minutes or so or we try to finish because in 15 minutes i'll not be able to but at least let us try to see what are the faqs what are the faqs which are uh, which are which are there uh, so again we go to the uh, slide show yes the number one faq is when should i start complimentary feeding number one number two what should i give and how should i start these are the genuine questions which are there number three is the child does that and start crying i have tried but i am not sure because whatever i give child does not take it and he starts crying so then i have to uh, put the child again on my breast so i am i am answering starting the complimentary feeding what should i do this is the answer for that this is the most common problem then the next question which is there is shall i continue breastfeeding or not once i have started the complimentary feeding what should i do shall i continue or shall i stop it 
what should I do? Right? So these are the various FAQs. And next question which comes is, there are a lot of market preparations and still there are in the market of despite having a code. Yes, there are. And you can't avoid the market forces. Should I give Cerulec or Farex or should I give home prepared, recommended? Because uh, uh, there are a lot of tasty foods, complementary foods, which are available in the market. And uh, mothers, they, they, they sway away and they, they use this. And uh, that these are the, the FAQs which are there. And uh, I will say only one thing. In the last 35 years of, of my preventive pediatric practice, I have never used any market preparation. I have never used any market preparation for any child as far as complementary feeding is concerned. Yes, you have to give a bit more time to the mother to explain each and everything. So keeping in mind these FAQs, uh, uh, will come to complementary feeding. When the breast milk alone is unable to suffice the need of the infant, transition from exclusive breastfeeding to family food is known as complementary feeding. Now, I think uh, this is a very, very good uh, definition of complementary feeding, uh, which uh, tells you everything. Number one point, when the breast milk alone is unable to suffice the needs of the infant, bearing, mean, meaning by what are the needs? The nutritional needs, the growth, normal growth and developmental needs. And that is why we say that, yes, you must take the weight of the child and the weight of the child is above 6 kg or so. Then that is the time to start complementary feeding because your breast milk will not be sufficient to suffice for the need of the nutritional need infant. And number two important again, is a transition from exclusive breastfeeding to family food. If you remember it, if you underline it, okay, is a transition from exclusive breastfeeding to family food. The food ultimately which the child is going to eat in the family, he grows when he becomes one year, two year, or a school going child or something like that or an adult. So the objective is not only to, to fulfill the nutritional requirement, but the objective is to develop the taste bud of the baby. Because if you are not going to do it and if you give artificial food, not the family food, then the taste buds will be different. And this is a very, very common problem. And I'm sure if you have young children in your family, you must be seeing the mothers are running after the children to eat the food which they have prepared and they keep on running. They don't eat that because the mistake is when they started complementary feeding, they did not use the homemade preparations at that particular point of time. They use the, the various formulas which are available in the market. And that is why, again, I'm, I'm again taking more time to tell you that, yes, this is important. This is important and uh, breast milk alone is not able to fulfill the needs. So it is weight related. And number two, you have to use the family foods because you have to develop the taste bud, bud of the child. Then complementary feeding. Again, it is both science and art. Only home available food should market preparations are best to be avoided. Home available food help in the development of the taste bud of the child and thus it helps to prevent the occurrence of feeding problems later in the childhood. So nicely explained in this slide what I have talked as the previous slide was concerned. So these are the five points which are important to remember. Then complementary feeding during during 6 to 12 months of age, what should be given? Number one principle is breastfeed as often as the child wants. And this is again taken from your IMNCI booklet. So I'm just first explain and then I will defer. Wherever I'll defer, I'll come back to you. Then you can offer banana, mashed banana or biscuit may be put into milk and then mash it and then give it. 
chiku mango or papaya because these are the soft things which you can give but you cannot start with this again this is i, I don't agree we will talk about it a bit later but let us first complete what is there in the in the in 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 your imnci list and what they say give at least one cup at a time of mash roti ice bread biscuit mixed in sweetened undiluted milk or mashed roti rice bread mixed in thick dal with added ghee and oil and add cooked vegetable also in serving or semaiya daliya halwa kheer prepared in milk or any cereal porridge cooked in milk or mashed boil fried potatoes and they are saying one katori at a time yeah, this is to be given this is to be given to a child who is between 6 to 12 months of age then uh, when and how three times per day if breastfed and five times per day if not breastfed remember keep the child in your lap and feed with your own hands wash your hands and child's hand with soap and water every time before feeding because there is there was a term now because we use complementary feeding there was a term which was known as weaning induced diarrhea because of that the recommendations change from 4 months to 6 months weaning induced when you wean off the baby from the mother's breast and you give top feeding and if hygiene is not maintained then then the mother can introduce infection or if the water is not safe then mother can introduce infection and which can result into diarrhea and then the cycle starts infection malnutrition and dehydration and severe dehydration and so on so that is important to remember then uh, what is to be done from 12 months to 2 years uh, uh, breastfeed as often as the child wants offer food from the family pot offer banana biscuit chiku mango papaya and uh, you have to increase the katori from one katori to one and a half katori at a time and uh, how when and how five times per day if not breastfed and the same recommendation is there now let's come down to reality this the these were the recommendations these were the theoretical recommendations which are there but let us come down to reality what usually happen up to that part of time maybe it is 4 months or 6 months the child is on liquid diet a child is on breast milk and i told you that child is a very rapid sucker so the problem arises when when you try to give something to the child with help of a spoon you can't match up the speed of the child by the speed which he was suckling on the breast so what is to be kept in mind number 1 you have to start complementary feeding at least half an hour before the scheduled time of feeding meaning by if 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 you are going to give breast milk to your child say in the evening at my class part class uh, a uh, time that is 6 pm if you are going to give uh, uh, if the feeding time is 6 pm then you should start either at 5:15 or 5:30 when the child is not hungry why it is important it is important because if this fact is not kept in mind and if one starts in complementary feeding when the child is hungry then the child is not going to accept and will start crying and no mother can see a crying child then mother what will do she'll keep the katori and spoon on the table and take the child in the lap and will start breastfeeding so the size will fail and uh, every time you will listen to this complaint and we have listened to this complaint a number of years and then we 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 we, we found out the solution that is the solution that you will have to apply and then you can't suddenly give it every time how you are going to start important so these two facts take home messages that you have to start at least minimum half an hour before the scheduled time of feeding if you are not going to start it then child will cry and your effort will fail then complementary feeding is bound to fail right so that is number 1 so this will result in non acceptance of the complementary feeding the reason i have already told you that reason like starting complementary feeding earlier is that the scheduled time is that the child is a rapid sucker and breastfeeding the child is able to suckle 50% of the breastfeed in first 2 to 3 minutes and this rate cannot be matched by spoon or any other method 
and we have seen uh, in our experience mothers using those marked preparations and uh, making the whole of the nipple larger and then putting it into the bottle and putting it into the mouth of the child so creating a lot of problems and then they keep these kind of kids they keep on suffering from ari and diarrhea every month and so on so this is not to be done this is to be done with the help of a katori on spoon chamach and katori is to be used then what 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 about the timing and amount ideally the mother should fix one time in the morning or in the evening in the beginning and we took the example of the evening uh, like today so say we start at 5:15 or 5:30 and initially a very small amount of liquid should be offered to the infant say today i have uh, made a, a very uh, maybe i have made a, uh, a pulse gruel uh, which is not very thick not and it is not it is it should not be like we say dal ka pani in a dal ka pani not to be given so various things you can use like you can make custard you can make suji ki kheer you you can use juices right and uh, you can uh, you can make soups you can make shorba uh, in the communities that kind of things are used and uh, what is to be done initially a very small small amount of liquid maybe you initially you give 3 4 spoon teaspoon to the child and then uh, the schedule time will be there and the child will be hungry at 6 o'clock then you give the uh, breastfeed to the child but then next day if you have given four spoons next day you try to give six spoons but then change the menu change the menu today if you have given suji ki kheer tomorrow you can use uh, uh, pulse gruel or a rice gruel something like that every day you keep on changing you keep on changing you don't keep the same same menu because even you can't eat same thing again and again the child is also very smart and you keep on increasing 2 to 3 tsf every day now uh, look, when we say 2 to 3 tsf means why to 15 ml and say you started with the 20 ml okay, and then you added uh, 2 tsf 10 ml every day what will happen say in 10 to 15 days time you will be reaching to how much amount 10 days time you'll add 100 ml 120 ml you will be able to reach 120 to 150 ml you will be able to reach in 15 days time initially what will happen you have to offer the breastfeeding at the scheduled time right that is very very important you will have to understand it i'm telling you this with my experience of starting complementary feeding in thousands of children and uh, this is the formula which we have used and we we find it that every mother is successful if we try this kind of method then in 10 15 days time the amount will be adequate so that the mother can mix the miss the scheduled breastfeeding that is that we started at 5:30 initially you give the milk at 6 o'clock when the amount is more say it is 120 to 150 ml then you can mix the 6 o'clock feed now the child will be hungry again after around 9 pm or something like that then you can continue the breastfeeding once you are successful in doing this then take another time in the morning say you want to start now in the morning say the scheduled time of feeding is 10 o'clock you start again at 9:15 or 9:30 when the child is not hungry and now because i've already given uh, uh, the child 120 to 150 ml you can stay away come to that 120 to 150 ml you need not to start again the same process in the same manner you have to start it once and if you are able to do it you are successful you, you the child is ready to accept it and then you keep on changing the menu and there are a lot of things which are give, given in your i mean ci uh, should we have uh, enumerated to you a lot of things again a uh, lot of things can be think though so that is the, initially only the liquids in the form of fruit juices soups and milk preparation should be offered to the child then semi solid like mashed banana boiled and mashed potato etc should be offered to the child and later on when child becomes toddler toddler is 1 to 3 years age then toddler must learn to eat from the family pot so what you are doing if you are making a pulse gruel then you are uh, using the same kind of 
masalas and everything which you are going to use ultimately in in, in your family food food so the same kind of family food is to one in the liquid in the semi solid and and a forms and gradually the child will start uh, accepting all these things and he learned from the family pot his taste buds will be uh, as per the uh, as per the cultural factors which are prevalent in the family and he will eat from the family pot and, and this will avoid the development of eating problems later on in the life and the mother should prepare the complementary feed self in proper hygienic condition before giving feed child she must wash her hand and clean the utensil after feeding the child is the risk of meaning induced diarrhea which we already discussed this way the child will learn to eat the home cooked food as well as will be able to fulfill his or her nutritional requirement except iron and that is why i said yes iron is important and it should be started condition should be given to every child except when there is a history of hemolytic anemia in the family then you have to uh you have to take the history in greater detail and uh, then you need not to give iron because then iron will be toxic for that particular child for this child needs to be given either food fortified with iron or iron supplementation under the supervision of a doctor so what are the requisite of a complementary feeding timely it should be started depending upon the weight at 4 months or 6 months but yes if your examiner ask you have to give the answer at 6 months it should be adequate that meaning by it should have nutritive value it should be safe it should be free from contamination and it should be appropriate meaning by it should be in the sufficient amount so to conclude breast milk is the best food for the infant up to from the examination point of view from a personal point of view it is weight related my view four months after six months complementary feeding should be started these two are the best practices for attainment of normal growth in children few mcqs according to who exclusive breastfeeding should be practiced till what age you can type the answer type the answer you can type the answer yes what is the answer six months right the answer is six months so uh we can say uh, this is the answer let's go back again to the slide show and show you the answer that is six months let's go to the next colostrum in comparison to normal breast milk has more fat more proteins lighter in color more constipating effect on neonate so it has more proteins which of the following is a contraindication for breastfeeding elderly gravida pre delivery mother with active tuberculosis nally paras woman of uh, adopted child again mother with active tuberculosis which of the following is not a component of whos bhi early initiation of breastfeeding foster establishment of feeding support groups breastfeeding on demand and establishment of human milk banks that is the fourth one is not the commandment or component of who bhi express breast milk can be stored in deep freezer at 90 degree centigrade for up to 6 months thank you so much for patient hearing if you have any any questions then yes uh, you can ask if there is any question ask. so this way i hope uh, we have been able to Uh, finish the art and science of breast and complementary feeding if you want to ask anything you can ask i would like to answer or maybe and the other request which i would like to make that if you have not subscribed to my youtube channel kindly subscribe because later on you will be getting the notification there only and uh, whatever comments you want to write you should write if you like it then you should write it on the youtube itself so that it motivate others to join right knowledge is for diffusion so whatever we can do we should be able to do at our end in this pandemic and this pandemic is going to persist for a long time whenever we are able to have a good presentation on covid with us 
then we will present that so and tomorrow again then uh, we started with the big win and uh, we have finished the b part that is exclusive breastfeeding and uh, tomorrow uh, we will be talking about yes there is a question uh, yes uh, questions are going up 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 again biscuits uh, somebody is asking encouraging biscuit does more harm than good uh, uh, no sir i have told you that uh, the concept of complementary feeding is whatever uh, family food is to be used it is to be used on the family pot why do you want to give biscuits if you have you have the other options so yes but then people are uh, people are uh, what should i say uh, people use anything but then uh, concept wise yes no if you go back and look at the presentation this presentation is already there of course the bfhi portion is not there uh, complementary feeding include all animal milk if you are going to use a milk based preparation then you are not going to use human milk you are going to use the other milk if you are going to use a milk based preparation. you can use either cow's milk or buffalo's buffalo's milk you must know what is the caloric value and you have to decide according uh, that can be used so what i was saying that this presentation is sir if a child stops breastfeeding at one year age started complementary feeding what point of time the complementary feeding started that is important the complementary feeding is uh, uh, is 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 a complementary feeding uh, is going to start at one year of age and it will be uh, too late and you have to continue breast feeding the child what is the recommendation up to the age of 2 2 years animal milk is complementary feeding advisable uh, i don't find any contraindication anywhere if you have ripan saha this has asked questions so yes you have read it somewhere you can share with me i'll go through it if you are going to use milk based uh, preparations then what kind of milk are you going to use if you are if you are uh, if you are saying that after 4 months or 6 months of age you again uh, use a breast pump and take out the milk and then give it if you want to do that that but that is more cumbersome to the mother right so so you don't breastfeeding you have to continue breastfeeding till 2 years of age till till 2 years of age but remember you have to remember one thing that exclusive breastfeeding should not be continued beyond 6 months to start complementary feeding because if you keep on doing that i gave you the example also that if the child is only on milk diet even the doctor of a doctor i treated say around 3 decades back she was giving 3 liter of milk to the child and the child was badly anemic right so that is the uh, if there are any other question yes guru krishna babu something is saying six i don't understand what is the meaning of this six ah uh, cretinism child do we have do we any extra complementary happy cretinism develops only when the thyroid screening is not done and cretinism is a very very dangerous phenomena you must understand it can result in mental retardation and it is a treatable and nowadays thyroid screening is done in all the new nets and those who are deficient in thyroid thyroxin they are they are given they are given the thyroxin so that then of course i can tell you but then again beyond the scope of this particular lecture uh, so nothing else is is recommended the same kind of things are recommended but then cretinism is 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 a preventable phenomena in preventive medicine we should give more stress on prevention so you will have to screen new net there is a new net in that screening which is done but then if if somebody has suffered then maybe the because the brain is developing in the first two years of life the most development is happening there and if somebody is having a deficiency of thyroid yes then he may go into the mental retardation that is what the treatment is so that is to be avoided at all costs the screening is to be done 
the babies don't suck mother breast soon after birth and another thing baby is not suckling me so should we counsel mothers and practicing proper attachment baby is called so again you are asking which i have already given you the answer that yes you don't have to put the nipple into the into the mouth of the baby you just have to touch the nipple and the when the the baby opens mouth and then suddenly you have to push the baby when the mouth is open then you have to push it towards the breast and then it needs patient i took lactation takes time for the establishment it takes around 48 to 72 hours you have to sensitize the mother in once right so any other question if, if if any other question is there then we take it up and uh, we have finished this uh, uh, b and now we should ideally should go to i and i is immunization i'll take two more minutes and then i'll finish so the first request is that uh, again i am requesting you that uh, yes if you have not joined my subscribe to my youtube channel you must subscribe whatever uh, good things you like you want to write of course you are writing lot of feedback to me on my personal whatsapp or on telegram then uh, i will request you to write on youtube also so that uh, other people get inspired motivated and join that is number 1 number 2 this presentation is already there on slide share you can see it already it has crossed more than uh, 1400 views or so so i will share the link with you again on telegram as well as on other platforms you can see it of course the presentation you can see it if you are watching the recording again then the other thing is then uh, tomorrow we will be starting with the i that is immunization and i would like to share with you that i have got one presentation on immunization on slide share and uh, i am very happy to share with you that that a single presentation has crossed 32000 views on slide share worldwide so we'll be starting with immunization and immunization again we cannot finish in one lecture there are booklets there are books on immunization so we try to finish and maybe in two two three lectures once we are able to finish that then probably we'll discuss something about growth monitoring we have discussed more and then we'll be going to iron so first let us try to finish the big win interventions and then we'll be taking up the the other uh, topics on nutrition so thank you so much and have a safe and happy day enjoy your day and uh, do join do subscribe to my youtube channel and uh, do give a positive feedback thank you so much bye bye